Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to chat a little bit about co-sleeping or bed sharing. Either way. please hit the subscribe button and join our little family. Uh, all in all, co-sleeping, oh goodness, uh, such a topic, such a taboo topic with so much misinformation. Before having baby girl, I have to admit I was completely negative to the notion of co-sleeping. I didn't really know exactly what it was, but just the idea of sleeping with your baby in the same bed as you, it terrified me. So I was like, no, no. Then, the basic information I always had from people around me was do not let your baby sleep with you in your bed because it will become a habit and you will not be able to get them into their own bed, uh, their own room, etc. After having baby girl and having her get sick at about two months old, um, I had to actually sleep with her whilst holding her in my arms because she could not breathe if put in her crib. So I kind of co-slept for a couple of days at that time. At the time, I got a lot of negative comments from family and friends who um, I mentioned this to because they said that it was extremely dangerous and that you just don't co-sleep and that she'll get used to it and she'll get into a habit and to stop it immediately. So as soon as she got better, I put her straight in her crib and that was pretty much the end of that. So from that point on until six months, baby girl slept in her crib just fine. We had no issues, no problems. She would go to bed at like 8.30, wake up at 8 in the morning. It was all good. Um, at about six months, six and a half months, we decided to christen her. And after her christening, which apparently was rather stressful for her, she did have like a very, very difficult week where she was constantly crying every time I tried to put her to sleep. So we had a lot of difficulty. I did not get any sleep during that one week and she was just constantly crying and exhausted at the same time and would just sleep in my arms whilst I was kind of walking up and down. It was a really, really just, oh my God. But after about a week of this just exhausting kind of me trying to put her in her crib, baby girl crying and screaming, I started trying to do something else. I started trying to sit down in my own bed. Whilst holding her asleep, I would sit down and lean back on my pillows and just kind of allow myself to rest a bit whilst holding her. And I would still try and get up from there and transfer her to her crib. I did that for about, I don't know, maybe another week or so. I tried, like, she would fall asleep in my arms. I would lie down in my own bed, kind of holding her, lying awake, watching YouTube videos or you know, just doing something else to keep myself awake. And then I would transfer her to her crib, at which point sometimes she slept for maybe 30 minutes, an hour. Sometimes she would just wake up straight away. Like she wouldn't even let me put her down. The moment I would kind of make the motion to put her down, she would wake up screaming. So after going through um, quite some time trying to do this and constantly getting in bed, out of bed, in bed, out of bed, like just this constant um, back and forth, I realized that I was going to just have to kind of accept the fact that obviously um, there were going to be times when she was not going to go in her crib. So I was kind of like, okay, um, if she sleeps for like a few hours in her crib and maybe like an hour or so with me, that's fine. So we kind of started doing this 50-50 where she would sleep in her crib for a bit if I managed to get her in there without her waking up. And the moment she woke up to have her first drink of milk at night, she would spend the rest of the night in bed with me. Um, initially, I was like trying to figure out ways to sleep comfortably. I was just basically sleeping, like just leaning back and just sitting there and holding her. And I'm not a person who moves in my sleep. I pretty much kind of freeze in position for some reason. So my husband would actually wake up at night and see us just like sleeping there. Just in the same position he had fallen asleep and he would wake up and find me just sitting there with baby girl in my arms. Um, after a little while, baby girl started refusing to get in her crib pretty much 99% of the night. And even though she was drinking less and less milk, so she wasn't waking up as often, um, she was still like, she would still refuse to sleep in her crib and only wanted to sleep with me holding her or popping her next to me. 
So I finally gave in at about seven months. I gave in and looked up co-sleeping. I looked into it, into safe ways of co-sleeping, what I needed to be careful of, what I needed to do, and just general information on it. I wanted to probably, at the time, make myself feel a bit better that this is what I have to do. I didn't really have a choice, but I did want it to be an informed choice at the same time. So I will leave a playlist down below with all of the different videos that I found. Um, the most helpful being a video by James McKenna, who has studied co-sleeping and has a lot of, lot of great information uh, in that video. So please check that out once you're done with my video. So after getting all the information I needed and finally finding uh, safe and comfortable ways for me to sleep with baby girl in the bed with me and my husband, of course, but on my side, I finally got the rest I needed. I could not believe how good I felt the first morning when I woke up with Baby Gill next to me after we had co-slept properly. Baby Gill, come here! So from seven months up to 12 months, uh, which Baby Gill, his birthday is on the 8th of February, um, we, are, we have been co-sleeping. We have been sleeping together in our bed. Um, much too many of my um, family and friends extreme like no don't do it <laughs> like stop <laughs> um i've just come to realize that when it comes to parenting you have to choose what is best for you and your baby and kind of tell people thank you but okay <laughs> you know that's that's the limit so we do co-sleep and the idea is that as long as she needs to co-sleep, we will co-sleep. Um, I do think that probably I wouldn't go further than two years of age, so I will start transitioning her into her toddler bed. I'm realizing that the crib is obviously not something she wants, so that's obviously out of the question. She has already uh, started kind of weaning herself off breastfeeding uh, during the night, so she will have her milk just before bedtime, and then she'll wake up again at like 6 a.m. to have some milk. She does not drink any milk um, during the night. So she is kind of weaning herself. Hi! I believe that is step one to transitioning her into her own bed. Yeah! So that is basically our own little journey. Um, we do co-sleep and we do have a little bedtime routine though. Um, which I do want to kind of change a little bit. But... Right now, in our current situation, it's pretty much what we can do. Um, and I will make a separate video on that, so on our bedtime routine as a co-sleeping family. Bertie! You want to say bye to our friends? Say bye! Bye! So yeah, so that's all guys. I will leave a link to the playlist in the end card as well as down below. Check it out, and if co-sleeping is for you, by all means do it. If it's not, again. You have to do what's best for you and your family. So, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Bye, guys!